What's up, Zay? How are we doing? Pretty good, man. I think you, you definitely got the record for the the first first one to pop in. Well, thank you. I just have it on the schedule, you know. Try to be on alaykum. time. Well, alaykum salam. Shalom. Alaykum salam, brother. Beef stew. I I grew up Muslim. I, I I don't I know Zay knows that, but I don't think most people we did. Know. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I'm just saying shit. <laughs> no, my my parents yeah, yeah. they were born in Ghana, but my mom is from Mali and my dad is from Senegal. So they 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 both all they both uh the entire families are Muslim. You know, but you know, baby, GH is haram, brother. I know. <laughs> I know, but <bro. laughs> I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I feel like they left it out. You know, it's like gray area. You know it, wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't in there. You know what I'm saying? Let me let Ken. No, but um, I don't practice. To be honest, man, I feel like these days it's hard to follow people who practice regularly, just because everybody's so busy, man. Everybody's trying to survive out here, man. You know, it's yeah. just a. Uh, it's just a. Uh, I don't practice either. You know. Uh, my, I grew up. I grew up in a Muslim family, but uh, I'm a spiritual guy. Let's just yeah, leave exactly. it at that. To yeah. be honest, I find the morals. What's up, you Ken? Know, let's go, Ken. What's up, Zay? How you doing? How you doing, guys? Good to see you, brother. I feel like it's more. What's more important is the morals you pick up from it, and that doesn't go anywhere, right? You're still gonna have the morals, right? Not that yeah. you, not that you need religion for morals, but a lot of good morals do come from from religion. You know what I'm saying? I think when you have a society with no religion at all, some people can get a little carried away. You know, not everybody. Like LA? Huh? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I think some people can go up. Yo, Ken, are, are you grew up a, a, a Christian? Yeah, yeah, I'm Christian. Okay. I'm Christian. Yeah. Because oh I, I don't... I know. I'm a heathen over here. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I know in Ghana it's is most it's mostly Christian, but you, you got the Hausa people who are who are Muslim, but but yeah. mostly uh mostly Christian. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I, know, I I grew up Christian, I'm still Christian, you know. Yeah. Um yeah. You go to That's church good. you go to church weekly? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Dang. <laughs> nah. Part time. I was just talking about it. I was like, is that we're all so busy, bro, with life, bro. It's hard to make a living out here. So a lot of us, we just don't got, to, just don't got a, a, a lot of time to really, you know, yeah. practice regularly every every day, every week. You know, uh, Muslims pray five times a day. Man, it's hard. I mean, I got to eat six times a day. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. She lines up pretty good, though. For me, for me, for me it's, like, up, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's philosophy, right? Like, the way I see it, it's, it's, it's your yeah. morals. Like some people to go to some people go to church or they, they go to the mosque every single week and they're the shittiest people on earth, That's right? True. Like at, at that point, if you're even practicing religion. It, it's it's more about your your inner belief and how you treat other people. At the end of the day, that's what most religions are. It's it's basically just how to treat other people. Yeah. You know, that, that's essentially it. So I think that as long as I I try to be a good person and I keep my beliefs, um. You know, I try well, to go to church when I can, but like you said, we're all busy. Yeah. And that's that's where I feel like is the most important part of the For whole sure. thing. Yeah, the most important part is the morals you learn from it. And right. sometimes, you know, a lot of times that passes on even if the kids coming after aren't religious, but they still have the, the morals from the religion, right? Right. And you got me wondering now, like, you think like Hadi eat six times a day and praise like right after meal two three four five and six he's not 100 percent like, like yeah. that would, and that would be too. super easy to remember bro like i i don't think honestly, I don't, a perfect sport i don't think how is muslim though i think not, I, he I, is oh he is muslim i think that yeah, oh, yeah. i think the iranians are you iran is iran is uh, a mostly christian and jewish actually Believe it or not. Yeah, but the predominant one, uh, like you're talking 85% and higher are Muslims, and the other percentages are uh, Jewish, I believe, and per, uh, Christian. See, I, I didn't know that because in L.A., all the Persians are, are Jewish, so I just assume mostly Jewish and Christian. Probably all refugees. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, there, like seriously, there's a... <laughs> fuck, I don't remember, but, like, there's been multiple regime changes there, and most recently, there's been a theocracy in place, a Muslim right. theocracy. So, 
that 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 that's news to me. I, I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. But uh, yeah, Rami, Rami, from what I hear, actually pray. He'll he'll stop and pray. Uh, and uh, uh, he he also does Ramadan, so he won't eat from sun uh, sun up to sundown. He just uh, he just sleeps during the morning and he just has a meal at night. So he's how you keep kind of cheating the system, you know. Mm -hmm. Worse. How about you, Joe? Uh, are you are you Christian, Joe? I would say I don't really like. No practice. I think the term's agnostic. Okay, okay. You don't follow religion, but you believe in like the a higher power kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I guess you could say I'm more Christian, but I'd be a hypocrite if I told you I was because I don't, you don't follow practice. it like that. Yeah, you know? damn. Are we are we all in kind of in the same boat? I mean, but, but I, I think Ken is it has a little stronger stronger faith. He just he just in a time crunch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wore I wore a cross for like ten years. I just lost it. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. I literally lost it playing like football or something. But yeah. um, my mom, well, I was raised Catholic. And I, I just thought the Catholic religion was a little like weird to me, like very cultish. So it's I didn't a bit like much, it. dude. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, dude. I was careful, Joe. Careful. careful. Actually, so. no, no, no disrespect to any Catholics out there, Thank but you. but uh, it wasn't for me. And then the Christians, I went to Christian church, and I thought there was like a lot of fake people there. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when I say fake, like put on a fake smile kind of thing, like That's act a certain way, and I, I didn't like it. I was like, I'm not a Trying to that's, see a part right, of that's it, exactly so. that's exactly what I was saying. What what Joe just said, you know, you have a lot of people that go to church every week. They they're there religiously, you know, in church for that one hour. They're like the nicest people, but when you truly know who they are, fundamentally, it's it's all just you know smoke screens. They're yeah. not really people. Yeah, yeah. Like, you take me how I am. So even if I'm in a church setting, you know, like you're gonna get the same me. Exactly. I, I just didn't I didn't like the fake faces and smiles and stuff and. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have my own relationship with with God myself, like at home and stuff. Like I can pray every day whenever I want. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't have to feel the need to go to a specific place to do so. Yeah. But like I said, I don't I don't follow any religion, so I can't say that I'm one. Yeah, I'm totally on the same boat with you, Joe. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, some of the people who go the hardest and are super judgmental of people are usually the worst people. You know what I'm saying? It is. Because it's more, it's more uh, like an inner self kind of thing. It's really your belief, right? Yeah. People are, are so outward that they, you know, they want to condemn you and condemn this person. A lot of times they're just using it to, to cover something, right? They they don't feel like they're a good person and they're trying to cover it with something. And that's not how religion should be, should be used. You know? I, I just feel like religion sometimes too, it's not put into context. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times when a lot of these scriptures and stuff were ran, regardless of religion, it was it was written in a very different time, and sometimes oh, people try to fit that to current society, and it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, what up, Paul? Like, what yeah, up, no, that's up. why I just said at the end of the day, it's just it's just about how you treat other people at the end of the day and your inner belief, your inner belief system. All the other stuff, you know, it's it's here or there. Like you know, even in Christianity, like you're not really supposed to cut your hair. You mm -hmm. know, you're not supposed to like shape your hair, but like, is anyone really doing that? You know, you're not supposed to have piercings or tattoos. Is anyone really doing that? If you're still a good person at the end of the day, like, why does that really truly matter? You yeah. know, yeah. that's why, like, I take it with a grain of salt, but you know, it's about the core and how you treat other people. And I try to treat people as 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 good as I can, you know, unless they're they're an asshole to me. And then, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> one, one good thing that my mom was always super open minded. She was more. She was more focused on if people are good people, and she wasn't like focused on one religion. She's like, "Oh, that person is a Christian, and they're a good person. I like that person. That person is Muslim. Good person. I like that person. That person doesn't believe in anything, but if a good person, I, I like that person." So she wasn't super, you know, like stern with that, which is what I like because I don't like when people are, are too like one sided. Like, but it's first, like like you said, it was a different time. That was, well, I don't know, thousands of years years ago. It's a way different world than back then. So some things we can't we can't incorporate hundred percent, but we just do our best to be good people. I think that's all that fucking matters at the, at the end of the day. You know, like I know we're all giving we're all giving intuition. You know, like everybody knows what's right from wrong. Like you just do. It's a feeling, like an internal feel. Like if you say you cheat on your girlfriend, it doesn't feel good. Like no. you know you're doing wrong. That's in the Ten Commandments. But no one need to tell you that. It just doesn't feel right. 
yeah. but you're given that God given intuition. Like just like you're given that intuition, like you guys can't prove that God's real, but like you believe in him, right? It's just like you pray to something and you just feel it. Like it's like an energy kind of thing. Like it, you can't explain yeah. it. Uh -huh. one, one thing I will say if anybody hopefully you guys haven't been through this or and never will. Um, but when you're like on your deathbed and you're about to die, God becomes very real to you at that moment. You know what I'm saying? That's why you see older people get really religious because you can see it clearly. Like everything goes away and you're like, this is not even real. This is like, you feel like you're in a simulation. You're like, you know what? You get a different perspective that you can't really explain until you've been there. Like all of this shit is a simulation. Sometimes you're like, what what's real what's not like am i here like you start to second guess the way your brain thinks and you're like you know say maybe maybe death isn't that bad like where am i going and you, uh, it's hard to explain I'm, I'm gonna sound like i'm crazy here but i've actually not, i know what you're trying to say i know, I know what I get you're exactly saying. what you're saying you know what i'm saying i've been i've been right i've been in a coma for a week before right and everybody's telling everybody i'm gonna I'm die and, and shit like that and i'm kind of i'm there but i'm not there because i remember like sounds and and colors and shit, and I'm trying to stay awake even though I'm asleep, right? It's, it's a weird feeling, but then you, you kind of have like an out-of-body experience. Like, you swear, you feel yourself there, but then now you're like, okay, am I ready to go? Am I not ready to go? And, and you're thinking of all this shit, and you you get really religious, actually, at that moment. So, so if, wait, you were in a coma? Huh? You were in a coma? Yeah, that was 2019. Please tell me you didn't go hypo. No, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't go hypo. That was that was like it was right before COVID came out. I don't think it was COVID, but I had pneumonia either way. So I, I suffered with a uh, respiratory issue. Though I was born with uh, bronchitis, so I was in the hospital. I didn't I didn't go home for weeks. You know, what I'm saying so was, I got asthma. I got the whole nine. I don't use an asthma pump. You know, probably because I use so much clean. I, I don't need the asthma pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so when I get sick, if I get a common cold, bro, man, it's bad. So imagine I, I get pneumonia. You shouldn't even be able to get pneumonia as a healthy young man, right? Because I was like, I don't know, in my mid twenties, but I did because I you know. And then it got so bad, they panicked, and I felt like they they did a little bit too much because I was breathing fine. They they put the the breathing thing on me, and then I couldn't breathe, so I passed the fuck out. And when I passed out, they kept me sedated, and I was just under for a while. But uh, if you have a lot of muscle, you don't want to get sedated. You want you don't want to get incubated because your muscle has to. You're not using your body, right? So your muscle has to. Um, your muscles atrophying, but it has to clear through your liver, right? So imagine you're eating five pounds of muscle every I don't know every day. That's that's a lot of pressure for your for your uh, for your kidney. Oh, yeah. so what happens is. So they have to help that they have to put you on dialysis because your your muscle is wasting so fast. Cause then you have rhabdo now because you can't move. So you can't preserve any muscle. So your muscle, so it becomes a whole ordeal. And then they don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know, and they're like, you have pneumonia, we have to give you Lasix, but then now you're losing muscle tissue faster. So your kidney is under it's a, it becomes a whole a whole fucking crazy thing. You know what I'm saying? And uh by the time I left the hospital, I was down like 50 pounds, but I was still like 240. I, I was still, you know, I, I had to stay on swole. I couldn't walk out there. Still brilliant, bro. <laughs> like, your your content's ready. Nap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I was doing like planks on a fucking bed and shit. I couldn't leave that hospital looking too <laughs> looking too soft. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's Paul. Should I should I even ask Paul if if, if uh what <laughs> Paul? Do you practice any religion, or are you spiritual? Um, practice? No. I mean, I have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. I feel. Okay. Um, I was born a Catholic. I was rebaptized a Christian. Mm -hmm. I mean, my ex-wife, I used to go to Catholic church with her. So I mean, I yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not really practicing per se. Who who would have ever thought this podcast would start with uh religion? Right? Oh, I jumped on that. I was but like, I, that I, was, I, was like a good person. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> what what just sounded <laughs> off like, yeah, I believe in God, even if it's not a religion. I'm just over here like Ugh. I'm just <laughs> I'm just staring off into the void, Bro, dude. I was watching through the whole time. Stu was like this, like I don't know what the fuck. Are you talking about? <laughs> I have thought about it. Man. I've thought about it, but like uh, I just can't get over the whole believing thing, yeah, the yeah. faith part. You know, I have faith I'm in myself and the weights and see what that does. You know. <laughs> Honestly, I've been there. It but never there's, changes. This is just shit that happens in life that I can't explain. 
that has happened for me that I literally can't explain it. Cause I, I was going down that path and everything, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't argue it after a certain point. Yeah. I tracked that, that wild shit up to being like, Oh, it'd be like that sometimes, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, you know what's funny? I, I do get stew side sometimes. I think, I, I think there's a balance. I think people, people can go too far. Like people be like, yeah, I don't got no money. I'm broke. You know what? I'm going to just leave it to God. I'm like, yo, get a fucking job. What you mean leave it to God? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? Oh, you know, I, I can't find a man, but God is going to I'm like, God is not going to get you a man. You uh-huh. got to change your fucking attitude. You know, you, you know, you know what's that. funny? You know what's funny to relate that back to bodybuilding? No no disrespect to anyone, but um, the whole thing that was going on with Lionel, right? Um, <laughs> and, and he made a post. <laughs> he made a post that was like, uh, God's time is the perfect time. <laughs> There's so someone commented on there. It was like, <laughs> God, God, God didn't want to see that. The guy didn't want to see that 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 uh that contest shit. Don't don't put that on him. Yeah, don't don't put that. On him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh my god! I want nothing uh, to do with this. Oh man! I remember uh, Boston used to get mad when people would win. And they would thank God. He would be like, listen, I, I'm not saying that I'm like an atheist or anything, but listen, you you bust your ass, bro. You bust your ass. Take that because those guys losing, does God not like them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Boston, man. <laughs> and I was like, yo, I, I can't even say nothing with that because you got a point. I'm not saying don't thank God. You, you could do whatever you want, but yeah. – Sometimes y'all be like, "Yo, what about your girlfriend sitting right there that was cooking all your fucking meals and swearing? You didn't, you didn't even think her. <laughs> well, what about her? <laughs> you know, what about your coach?" Sometimes people just that? say it to say it, man. I just feel like sometimes you go up there, people just say stuff to say stuff when you go up there. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, like I've seen, you know, you watch multiple Olympias and Arnolds, and they interview some people, and you're just like, "Yeah, it's." I was expecting them to say that, like, For you sure. know, it doesn't look like it's coming from the heart. It's just, bro, you know. Standard stuff. You got to give it up to like C Bum. His speech yeah. is becoming straight from the heart, bro. And yeah. it's so good that it sounds like it's written, but you know it's not because what he what, what yeah. he's saying, right? Yeah. Or like uh Cedric, <laughs> Cedric McMillan, bro. The best speech is because it's just coming from the heart, bro. And it's raw. They curse, yeah. they're, they're not trying to be political, they're not trying to sound like this pure person, they're just saying whatever they feel. You know, uh C Bum was dropping F bombs and shit. I was like, damn. Okay, but Wait, he, at the Olympia, he was. Yeah. yeah oh he damn. <laughs> he did a couple, <laughs> and then he tried to correct that. He was like, "Effing, I'm so effing proud of you," and he and then he ended it with a fuck. I was like, "Yo, you are a great guy with the fuck." <laughs> at the end of the day, when it comes from the heart, I think I think people can respect that. Even if I don't agree with what you say, if, if you're just coming from the heart, I always respect it. You know, that's Dude, why that you got. If I ever win some shit, like I want to say some out of pocket stuff in the in the speech, you know, just like <laughs> just not even like rude or weird, just like just like not what people expect, you know. Like yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna be thanking my dog and my mom and shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This my is mom, why I take drugs. Just surprise <laughs> people, you know. It's so tiring, right? It gets so tiring. Like even it's like, all the same, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the press conference, right? This is the one thing that I think. People should just stop when it's like, I want to thank all my fans. I don't, I want to thank everyone. You know, the fans, it means so much for you guys to be here. Every single person before they ask them a question, just answer the question, man. Like we all support you. You know what I mean? It just sounds when you started off like that, it just doesn't sound genuine. You know, let's be real, bro. Do any of you compete? For the fans, or do you do you compete because you fucking no. you, you just, like, <laughs> trying to win, dog? <laughs> Don't really care up. about them at <laughs> all. <laughs> Let's keep okay. Maybe maybe I, C-Bum, at this point, Sebum might actually compete just yeah. for his fans at this point. But everybody else up there, bro, you're not competing for for your fans. So you know, yeah. yeah. Just 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 keep it a buck. Be like, yo, this. Uh, I mean, Kai. Kai would go on a little too long, but Kai. Kai has some good insight. Dude, but anybody who struggled and went through this and, and do, did this and finally made it, you'll know exactly how I feel. And he he gets deep sometimes. Maybe he goes uh, like an hour too long. But I was going yeah. down what the fuck Kai's saying sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't yeah. miss that. I like I, I like I like early Kai Green. I think towards the end, 
He was getting a little mystical. He got too up his own ass, dude. <laughs> but but you, you know what's mystical? <laughs> you know you know what's super funny though. So I know Kai personally, right? Because I, I lived I lived in Brooklyn, literally down the block from uh, one of his uh, one of his properties. Because he kept he kept the the projects apartment. And when he, when Kai talks in Kai talks like he's from Brooklyn. Kai don't really talk like that. <laughs> Kai talks like a, a guy from Brooklyn, bro. He doesn't actually talk like that. So it's funny because I'll see him how he talks to other people. But being that he knows me from Brooklyn, he just talks to me like like a regular guy from Brooklyn. So uh, honestly, I think he would be even more popular if he was just like that. Just just be Kai from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to see. You know, I would see him work out, and he would get into it. He would be sweating and cursing and shit. But when he works out on camera, he makes it look like he does these like super sets and like Buddha, yeah. and he makes it look pretty. But I've seen him shoulder press four or five plates with a drop set. I've seen him squat till his eyes fucking. Pop the blood vessel on his that's, eye. That, that's why Overkill is still his best. Doc. That's one of my favorite documentaries. But it was raw, ever. bro. It was raw. That was raw. That was raw. Like, and after that, I think he did a couple after like Redemption and a couple. It didn't hit the same because Overkill was when he was going for his first Olympia and he wasn't yet used to the limelight. So it was oh. just Kai Green, like the real Kai Green. 100%. And you really get to see it. You, you know, get compared to like, yeah, the other yeah. scene where he's talking in the gym and he sounded like Brooklyn Kai Green. When you're talking about Ronnie yeah. Coleman, he was like, Yeah, there's a nasty motherfucker in there and all of that. I'm like, ah, that's 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 how Kai Green sounds. <laughs> but like I think because he wasn't winning the Olympia and Phil at the time was like the poster boy, Both the pretty boy, boy. I think he was in his head, he was like, Okay, let me let me make myself more marketable to the mainstream. But I don't think I don't think Steve Weinberger cares about that that kind of shit. I think he's just judging. I thought Phil, because because Kai beat Phil at the Arnold a few times. I think Steve is just. I don't think Kai ever beat Phil at the Olympia. So I think I think Steve is just judging what's there. I don't think he gives a fuck about what you what you did in your past. You know, I, I don't. I don't. Were they, were they, now we look back at the tapes. Were they that really? Were they really that close though? I don't like, think so. I don't think. I don't so. think so. No. I don't either. I never. I never saw Kai beat him once. Like in my yeah. opinion. Early, like, early, early, early yeah. I think I think Kai got there before Phil. Like Kai had that grainy condition before Phil. That's why he was able to beat him at the Arnold. But once Phil it was added, sick that Arnold. Yeah, he was. That's true. He, he ended up he and, was sick. That's why he came forth. That was his so lowest was. Place ever. And and know? argue argue arguably Phil could have won one of those Arnold in, in twenty ten. Yeah. I thought Phil could have won that Arnold. Um but anything outside of that, once Phil gained that extra maybe five pounds of muscle in like 2011, bro, there was there was, there was no way. It, was, it wasn't close, yeah. There was no way. Like when you look back, like I remember during that time, because I was, you know, most of us were already following bodybuilding to a point. People used to say like, oh, Kai Green should have won like 2013. He was robbed. This and like that. Kai was the most popular name like yeah. back then. You know, Phil wasn't even more popular. Kai was more popular than Phil. I agree. Um, but when you look at the tapes, man, and everyone on this podcast knows bodybuilding, it was not close one bit, like one bit. Phil 2012, 20, 20, 2011 to 2013, it's probably one of the best bodybuilders of all time. Like I outside mean, of Ryan Coleman, yeah. he's the next one, you know, 2011 to 2013, hands I, down. I agree. Yeah, and you maybe, missed so, that from like 10 years ago. Come, come for the kill. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, I don't like when the 90s guys say, like, the 90s are so much better. But I will say, if you take prime Phil, Kai, prime Dennis Wolf, um, prime Sean Roden, and put it in today's Olympia, I, I don't think Derek and Heidi and Samson can can stand next to prime Phil, prime Kai, personally. So, you know, like, Derek, Derek's back double, right? Like, you look at it, it looks amazing. But you still put that next to Phil or Ronnie, <clears throat> yeah, it's never yeah. going to beat him. No. Yeah, I mean, never. He has the he has a better taper and a lot of width, but that density, but, yeah, bro. It's, the it's, way it pops out at you, Derek doesn't have that. He won't. Yeah. Just, we're gonna be twenty years from now on this podcast. We're gonna be like, fuck the guys today. These guys take <laughs> drugs. Oh, they don't. They don't work hard. <laughs> still, still, still be like back in my day. Yeah, back in my <laughs> Oh, all I did was all don't I get did me was started. Five, all I did was three hundred tests. I didn't do any discipline. Yeah, oh. and get, they're gonna dig up these old podcast tapes, and they're gonna be like, "Oh, you said you were doing all this shit." Yeah, exactly. They're gonna be like, oh, oh, "What you, you said? Why, dude? Can I use you said too much?" Yeah. yeah. No. Who, who do you think has the greatest back double in history? 
from head to toe, not just like back or anything like that. Ronnie. Ronnie. 2011 Phil, Phil Heath finals. I think I think I'm I'm with Zade. I think it's Phil, man. Because Ronnie had one of Ronnie's lots was they were not symmetrical. Um, so one of his lots was like a little bit, I don't know if he tore it, but when he does the back double, I don't know if you notice a lot of times one is kind of squeezed in a little bit. The mm -hmm. lower body was good. It was diced out just like Phil, but the upper, I think, I think Phil is like I'm if you put the two together, Phil yeah. Phil, is, Phil has the best back double. I'm with uh, I'm with Zayden Ken because what I'm what I'm looking at is Ronnie Ronnie had a crazy back, but if you break it down, and it depends what year Ronnie we're talking about. If we're talking about '98 Ronnie, he was actually balanced, he was shredded, but he wasn't as thick from the back as Phil. Yeah. And then you you bring it to the big Ronnie, two uh, thousand two thousand three, when he was his biggest, he didn't have the detail Phil had, and he he was be, he was starting to become trap dominant. So you didn't see a lot of crazy lower back action. You saw mostly traps. And then one lat was a little bit smaller, and both of his lats were a little down, and his his triceps was a little down. So you can't accept, you can't combine, you can't make like a CGI Ronnie and take ninety eight and combine it with two thousand three. I think a lot of people do that. So I for me, I, I think I think that Phil, like, it's really really pretty, mm -hmm. but there's like a certain like the best word to describe is like a gnarliness. Like it looks so hard and detailed in the lines, like really from the, from the shoulders, to the triceps, to the way the, the glutes separated and the tie into the hammies. Like, yeah, the Ronnie glutes and hams are just out, so out, much bigger. But, crazy. Okay, but, yeah. but we, we got to say, which Ronnie are we talking about, though? Because the, 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 the his best back double ever. That's the one. <laughs> yes. I, I, don't, I don't have a catalog of shit in front the of biggest, me, bro. The biggest Ronnie was like 20, 2000 and, 2002 onwards, right? Yeah, but, that's, but, what, but, that's what Bidey's saying. The 2002, no, no. the lot was already damaged. My issue so, is this. Because we have, because Ronnie was so long ago, we have this imaginary vision of Ronnie. Yeah. That's why people never pick a year. They just say, no, just Ronnie. But you have to actually look at it. There's two different kinds of Ronnie. The the detail and graininess you're talking about, you're talking about 98 to, to 2001. That Ronnie is not bigger than Phil. He's not more muscular than Phil. The Ronnie after that is more muscular than Phil, but he did not have the detail Phil have. So, yeah, if you combine all the best Ronnies and put it in CGI, he beats Phil in 2011. But we're, not, we're just talking about one year of Phil, the best, what I think was his best year. If you put that against Ronnie's best year, which I think is 98, Phil beats him, but if you put it against 2003, which some people think is his best, I don't think it's his best because just because you have shredded loose doesn't mean you're fully strided. And he has shredded yeah, you guys, you guys need to look at those back level again, man. That thing is yeah. complete. There's, no, so, there's nothing missing. <laughs> there's so nothing missing. The, the, on, the only way to do this is to pull up specific picks because if we just yeah. talk about the legend of Ronnie, he smokes everybody, but then now you're combining the best of different years, but he never combined the best of different years. He was either shredded complete balanced Ronnie or he was big not so shredded kind of shredded full Ronnie with lagging triceps not as much less you know what I'm saying so so yeah so I think you have to be specific I think if you're specific and you pinpoint one year I think Phil wins but that's just my opinion I'm just no, I'm with you man I'm with you I'm with, I'm with, uh, 2011 I was there bro one of the best Olympias I ever did I've ever seen I mean um 2011 yeah it's Bro, sharp. Uh, especially for finals. High school back then. Holy shit. Especially for finals. <laughs> I kind of I kind of see that happen with a lot of 90s guys like Kevin Lavoni, right? Same thing. There was like early Kevin Lavoni who was peeled out of his mind, but a little smaller, and then he gets bigger and bigger, and then maybe not so shredded, right? So I, I've seen Kevin post like, I could have beat Ronnie, I could have beat Phil, and I'm like, but he'll post his best, most muscular one day, and then post when he was shredded from the back. But it was, it was two different things. When he had that crazy full most muscular, he wasn't shredded from the back. You know what I'm saying? But when you combine it, yeah, then it makes this unstoppable Kevin Laverne. But the truth is, he never did both of those at the same time. But but Kevin never really had like he's probably getting a lot of hate, but he never really had a lot of like a good back. I always hated his back. It was big, no but it wasn't I like think, shapely. You know, like it wasn't yeah, like, put together saying, nice. It was, it was impressive in its own right, but like it's not. It, it wasn't oh. crazy. I felt like it wasn't gonna beat Ronnie. It wasn't. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I felt like similar to Ronnie, he had two different backs. I, I felt like the early back was shredded, with detailed, but not that big. And then later, 
later on he had like a bigger back, but it just wasn't any detail in there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of nostalgia comes from we look back in history and we just combine all the best looks, right? Same with flex. We have shredded flex that was lighter aesthetic, and then we have big, big round flex who had like you know his arms is crazy, shoulders are crazy, but it started getting a little suspicious looking. You know what I'm saying? So when you and that's and that and that's why like this is gonna sound really controversial, but I want mm-hmm. you guys to really think about it. Like the later years of Ronnie, um, you know, 2003 onwards with today's judging. You know, put that next to a Phil Heath, he may actually have lost because of the stomach control. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. I think they would have docked him with today's judging, you know, with the later years when he got really, really big compared to like, you know, Phil, you know, 2013 downward, 2013, 2011 Phil. That yeah. would beat the Ronnie of 2003 with today's current judging. But if I, you say that online, you know, people, 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 yeah. people will just, you know, smoke well, you. What it is, is not, like they yeah. they don't really like you don't really see anybody in the pro league with a big gut nowadays no, at all. No. Like they made that very clear, and we, yeah, I mean everyone got it under control. You can't have it. I mean Phil lost, and honestly, I don't even think Phil's gut was that bad. I just think he had a, a clear visible hernia, and he couldn't flex his abs, which is bad. But he didn't have like I don't think he had like a a level of distension that Dorian had that one year or Ronnie had that one year. And they still won, right? No. So, but but they they were hard on Phil because the times were changing already. I think Phil gets a lot of he doesn't get enough credit, man, because all he had to take was shit talking and Generation Iron fucking up his character, and he doesn't get as much respect as he does. I think he could have had eight. You know, I think Sean Roden looked incredible, but I think Phil beat him in more shots. You know what I'm saying? And if he would have had eight, I think that would change the conversation. But I, I personally like Phil as the GOAT. I think he's the most complete bodybuilder of all time. I don't I'm not gonna say he's gonna beat Ronnie at his prime because nobody knows that because they have to stand next to each other. But I personally have Phil as the GOAT and everybody disagrees with me when I say that because Yo, bro. Oh. Ronnie's the GOAT, bro. Chill. <laughs> because I, I, I just feel like, I feel like now the level I didn't like anything after 2001, man. I gotta be honest. I I I wasn't a fan of Ronnie's physique after maybe oh one, you know, if I'm being honest, but you can't say that out loud because everybody thinks you're crazy. But we gotta go back and look at these picks because everybody's confusing different, you know, everybody thinks that Ronnie was just perfect from from ninety eight to two thousand and six. And that just wasn't the case. He the had reason was, the reason why I still say Ronnie's the goat, right? Mm-hmm. Look at Jay Cutler two thousand and nine. Yeah. That was arguably Jay Cutler's one of Jay Cutler's best years and where Branch Warren came second. Condition wise, for sure. Condition wise. And, you know, that Jay Cutler arguably couldn't even really beat Ronnie in his prime. Mm-hmm. And that Jay Cutler, I think in 2009, Phil didn't compete that Olympia. He competed in 2010. But I really think that Jay Cutler would have beaten Phil, would have beaten Phil in 2009 if he stepped on stage. So I, I don't know, man. I feel like Ronnie's still the goat. I feel like the judging has changed. So it would be this disadvantage to him. Yeah. But like Joe said, there's that graininess that Ronnie had. Like when you're a lot of times, if you're a really big guy, you don't have that kind of detail. Mm-hmm. That's what made Ronnie so special. Like he had the mass and he had the gnarly detail and the Olympia conditioning to go with it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's later when he started having injuries that things weren't put together uh, properly. But in terms of the greatest of all time, man, like. I mean, Ronnie transcends just the stage, right? Like, we're talking about training, training, lightweight, you know, all his – I mean, he's culturally, like, he set the culture for the early 2000s of bodybuilding till today. You know, there's no one that doesn't know who Ronnie Coleman really is that ever picked up a weight, you know, in their life. Yeah. And I, yeah. It's just, it's just what it is. There's probably a lot of Zoomers who don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the charm, the I kept looking at your screen. I'll try to say dude. something eventually. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't. I, you think so low of me, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I think that high of you. <laughs> no. We I, need I, people I, like Stu. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't have any uh, rebuttal against that. Like, as far as <laughs> who's, like, the bigger icon and who has the biggest body of work and who... Who influenced the sport the most? Ronnie, Ronnie by a mile. You know, I, I just like how how balanced Phil Heath's physique 
was for a longer period of time. You yeah. know, I, I think 98 Ronnie, that's my favorite Ronnie. I, I think that Ronnie is incredible. You know, I just, think, uh -huh. I, there's one thing I'm, I'm going to say. I think Phil was one of the guys that really changed the way people train and push people towards machines. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you guys recall, before Phil, a lot of people weren't really doing machine work. I remember they used to make fun of Phil early in his career that he only did machines. Yeah. And then he started winning. And I feel like, you know, the training style has really changed where you see a lot of people doing machines over, over free weights. And I think Phil, he didn't do it directly, but I think he's partly responsible for that. Because I didn't, I didn't do any machines back then. Like I, yeah. if I did, if we anybody did machines back then, they would call you a pussy. Like why are you yeah. doing a machine? You're a pussy. So no, nobody used, nobody used any uh, machines back uh -huh. then. I'm the biggest pussy of all time. <laughs> <laughs> then back then you would have been for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, like, benching hurts my shoulders. Like should be hurting now, bro. I got to be honest with you. My wrist be hurt when I when I when I do the dumbbells, dumbbell press. I I, I love how it feels, but my wrist be on fire, bro. You know. But I also don't use any equipment, so I probably should invest in some wraps and shit. Do you guys you guys use like uh, wraps and belts and straps and? As of oh, lately, yeah, we've been going really heavy. So yeah, lately. Yeah, I don't. I don't use shit. I gotta be honest with you. I don't use anything. I, I I don't know. I used to use belts and stuff back before, but now I feel like even belts just get in the way. Bro, like, it, has, bro. it just gets it, in the way. You the know? time it takes to wrap my knees, bro. I'm like, yo, bro, fuck this shit. I kind of done two sets in that fucking. <laughs> I use a knee sleeve, <laughs> but that's about it. Like, you know, bro, that's, that's about it. When I was, I don't know how you guys be pushing that kind of. I've, I've seen like, I think Stu, I think it's it's you. I've seen some of your videos, like no knee sleeves, just like. Pounding, you know. No, I use I use sleeves. I can't like, do shit. I can't do that. Sleeves. I don't know how people do it. My knees, my knees would fucking kill me. You know. Yeah, my knees hurt a lot too. Yeah, my no. left one's really bad. When I was training in the Bronx, man, I used to have, I used to have like three people wrap my knees, bro. One person would hold me down. One person would hold it, and they'll tuck it to the, the other fuck. And, and the other, yeah. like fucking team like effort. This. The other one's spitting in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was back when I, I was squatting like six and a quarter. I felt nothing in my legs, all back and traps and fucking spine, bro. That's that's all I was training back then. But it felt good and it gave me bragging rights. You know what I'm saying? I walk in the gym, you know, you know what time it was. Yeah, I feel like everybody has to go through a phase like that. I don't I can't do that anymore. Like I can't I couldn't squat six plates. I used to though. I, like it was it was sick. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even fuck try. Bro like that. There's no, there's zero desire. Like I don't walk into the gym like, yo, how much weight can I squat? It doesn't even cross my mind. I'm just trying to get a fucking pump at this point, you know. I, I literally, I literally cannot do a leg day without starting off with leg extensions. Impossible. Like, yeah, I, I, I have to do it, or I can't squat or nothing. I can't. You're do just it. warming up your knees, or are you actually going hard on them? Both. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I'll do I'll do like a warm up into like a heavy heavy pre exhaust before I do any of my compound. Okay. Yeah, like I'll start super light on the extensions and I work all the way to like really heavy sets. And yeah. Then I leg press, then I squat, then I maybe finish with lunges or a sissy squat or something like that or like a second squat motion like a hip squat or some shit. But that's the only mm -hmm. way right you now, but it still looks heavy to the average person. But if you knew how I trained before, you would be like, "No, nah, he's 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 not training heavy anymore." Train like a pussy now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I think you have to at some point if, if you want longevity. You got to train like a pussy at some point. But uh, yeah. listen, man, Negzilla should have been second place. I don't care what Ken says. Yeah, yeah, I don't even care. <laughs> oh man, Grizzle did not beat this guy, bro. I don't. I don't see the hyper crystal. I see a guy with really good arms, bro. But <laughs> I, I don't see the legs. I don't see the glutes. I don't see the hamstrings. The back has detail, but I don't see the width. I honestly, I have nothing against crystal. I just can't see the hype. I mean, a lot of people got big arms. I, I don't. I don't see why why that's so special. This this he actually has big arms, but his legs are way too big that his <laughs> arms don't look that big. But I mean, I think he has a better back. Listen, and he's in condition. Is he fucking Roman Fritz shredded? No, but Roman didn't press place top six because it's not a condition contest. It's everything. 
it's really weird. Like his, the front of his legs are just like eight weeks out. And then his glutes and hams are like two weeks out, you know? Yeah. You know, I think that has to do with mass. Like they're so big. So much that they lack detail. And yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was thinking. I think it just gets to a point where it's, the leg is so the details is not there because of just the sheer size. I think I feel like someone like him, he probably needs to do a lot of tissue work because from the side, the legs are completely dug yeah. out. Yeah, look at that shit. Yeah, yeah it, but if, from the front, there's no detail at all. He probably needs to do some tissue work, get some get some blood in there, you know, because yeah. things are just like knotted up. That's just. Can what you I'm imagine that Carlos has the same issue? Yeah, yeah. like because he's got similarly retarded quads, yeah. you know. And then, but they're not super detailed from the front, you know. I don't. I don't think he needs to do all these ground poses and and side transition poses because he's a mass monster and he's just pumping his quads up even more, doing all these squat, this squatting on stage. I think because <laughs> a big man never goes down. You're a big man. You shouldn't be, shouldn't oh, be doing these crap poses. Why are you doing it? Stand up tall, you know. Yeah, I would have torn. I would have torn my my ball sack right there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then when your legs are your best body part, when you squat down like that, you're completely negating how big your legs are. Yeah, he looks proportionate. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, like, I think I think with him, right? But with him and Crizzo, the reason why it's just. Like everyone just said it from the front, that lack of detail in his legs from the front, it's yeah. even if he's in condition, it looks like he's not in condition because it's his biggest body part. Right. You right. Know? Listen, I saw a video of him squatting like six plates. Why the fuck is this man squatting six plates? His legs is already the biggest in the fucking world. He don't gotta squat at all. Just just do fucking a set of sissy squats. Don't this even is cool don't to even squat even... six plates, bro. <laughs> like <laughs> Bro, don't even don't even train legs for most of the off season, honestly. Bro, those legs aren't aren't going anywhere. You know, so that's that's you just you just wasting calories at the point. You could save those nutrients for your damn um back or your shoulders or something, you know. Well, you know, it's kind of like you know how you said like you should have placed second. I agree to an extent, just because I don't really care for Crizzo too much. Uh -huh. But uh being off balance like that with your legs so overpowering that hurt that hurt Rami for years. It did, it did. And so I mean, you, it's not going to be any different for this guy. Like, don't you think Crizzo is off balance the other way? I well, think he has no ass. <laughs> yeah, that's all he's missing. Like he has a back. He's got arms and delts and legs. It's just like he's got no ass. It's very off. Yeah, like I, I see balance. He has, like Crizzo. he has no ass, and I. I think uh, the other guy's a better poser. I, and I think, you guys, you guys forget, you know, Crizzo is actually a big guy. Um, he's tall, yeah. He's really yeah. tall. So you guys you guys are not taking into account that size, too. He's he's just – he's a six-footer, just like Samson and and uh, Nick. God damn, he's got big-ass ears, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you think you're catching the wind. Damn. And then Crizzo, what Crizzo has, too, that a lot of guys don't have is, like, he, when he – when he, especially his front parts, um, when he flexes, he has a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it's kind of like that kind of condi that kind of you know, Iranian conditioning where like you can you can see the lines and everything in there, like and it's very clean. It's very clean looking. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think he's quite quite with the Persians yet, but <laughs> nah, <not> yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> he does have like a really clean, polished look. Very to clean him, look, yeah. It's a like very clean literally look. a Mister Clean ish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, it's a very clean look. That's a great comparison. I, I see Mister Clean. <laughs> <laughs> did, did some, like did like Crizzo, honestly, the only thing Crizzo needs is um, if he was able to like his uh, his abdominals, if yeah. he's able to get up in his glutes, his physique will look completely different. Like yeah. you wouldn't, you wouldn't even be having this conversation. You would be putting him way up there because that's that's just all that's missing, to be honest. Yeah. How I mean, old is he? Does anybody know how old he is? Thirty-two or thirty-three? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. So he's not that old. He's, he's no. young. Yeah, he's young. He just looks like he's forty-five, but he's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> feel that. <laughs> no. But his um, yeah, his, something about his mid midsection looks a little off. I think it's the. I think he has short a short waist because he has like a four pack, uh, like something like that. And then uh, there's a little bit of distension sometimes. 
Uh, none, okay, not even the stature. I, I think he just doesn't control it well, honestly. Yeah. I think he's not controlling it. But his back looks a lot better than it than it did before. And his glutes. Yeah. I mean, his yeah. opening up finally. He used to have yeah. a problem with opening up his back. Yeah, man. I still uh, I still got Nick Zilla second for the record. But he looked great, man. He looked great. Uh, I mean, I wanted to say something about because. I mean, we talked about Rubio uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, oh, you know, that was before he did his competition. I was like, I don't know. You know, he's not he's not balanced here and there. It looks – let me just take all that back, man. He's he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's the real deal, guys. He's the real deal. I got to be honest with you. If his legs are detailed and he's actually, you know, maybe like just a touch sharper, I could see him giving Samson a run for his money. I'll be honest with you. Like he he wasn't that far off from the side. He was killing everyone. He was the yeah. best on the side. Yeah, the side uh, tricep and side chest was like yeah. fucking no crazy. Okay, no who, who who had the better side chest and side tricep than Rubio? Uh, no one. Yeah, no I don't. One. I don't exactly. think anybody. I don't think anybody. Somebody. One of my clients said that, and first I was like, "Whoa, take it easy." Then I was like, oh, "Hold on, let me look." And then I'm like. Damn, I can't think of anybody that got a yeah. as better side pose. Maybe like the shape of his side, the side of his leg is a little funky because his quad is so goddamn big; it like carries down. Yeah, it just—it's not like the typical look of a side leg, but I, that's about all you can knock. Do Do you guys think Samson looked a little smaller but a little harder than Olympia? I don't see any difference, honestly, yeah. between the three shots. Just because he's standing next to two six footers, so he's no yeah. longer the yeah. biggest guy on stage. That's just the difference. But he was standing next to Derek. The same yeah, good point. I thought I thought Nick Zella looked bigger than him, bro. If I'm being honest, he is bro. more muscular than him, bro. <laughs> bro. bro, look. I don't know if you guys watched the prog properly. Mm-hmm. Look at the first group comparisons. Neck was in like the the last group comparison with the um, I forget the guy from China, and a couple of other European bodybuilders. It doesn't even look like he's doing the IFBB. It looks like NPC. I'm not kidding. He is not. he is the real deal. I was I was very impressed. I was that side try is it's the insane. best in the league right now. Look at his tricep. Best in the league. That's you know crazy. what it is? Like, his arms are big. It's just that his legs are so fucking big, bro. But he has big arms. I think he could maybe use a little more shoulders because his triceps are so big and his traps are so big, maybe. But um, I think he has good arms, actually. What's crazy is the detail on the side of his leg compared to the other two that being yeah. that big. Yeah. Bro, look at the detail on his leg compared to Sam. Or even his calves, bro. His calves are fucking straight. I was looking at that, yeah. <laughs> That's You don't see that often. Samson has big legs. Yeah. But next to next to uh wow. it doesn't yeah. even look it looks normal, you know? Yeah, it does. Uh I think I think neck is neckzilla is behind them. He looks like he's further back because Nathan is not behind, yeah. Nathan is uh shorter, quite quite a bit shorter. But uh yeah, I still I still got neck neckzilla when inside the chest. I thought I thought uh Nathan looked like his condition took a step back. Because he yeah, looks better. He's a little watery. Yeah, and he's then, tired. And even though Nathan has a small waist, um, he doesn't look that aesthetic. Um, I, I, I think his the way he poses compared to how he used to pose. I, I like how he used to do his front double before. He didn't pull his waist up so high, and his arms weren't so low down. I think it makes his waist look super long. And his ab, his ab and thigh, um, he changes it a lot too. It looks, it looks, uh, it looks very different when he's posing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm saying this prog, this prog pro. I don't think people are giving Rubio the the credit he deserves. Think about all the shows this past year. Man, Rubio, went to he Tampa. won that shot. He won that shot for sure. Well, if he went to Tampa, team. what would have happened if he went to? You, you would know, have won all of them. Yeah, you would have won all of them. I, I, I'll be honest. You guys know I'm biased for Andrew. I'm biased towards Andrew Jacked. Yeah. I don't know, man. Him versus Andrew in condition? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, okay, the question is, is he Nigerian? Do you have a reason to root for him? <laughs> <laughs> we got to figure like, Where I mean, is he from? Well, well he's, born, he's born in Colombia, but he's not Colombian. So what <laughs> is he, blood-wise? Blood I don't know. I think he's Colombian. I think he's 100% Colombian. 
Bro, are you serious, bro? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not like the Colombians. They're different. Like, there's mestizo. There's, there's yeah, yeah, no, how do you African -American Colombians, just African Colombians, you know. Afro Colombian. But I mean, like, yeah. where is the genetics from? It might still be from Nigeria, technically. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, the, just take the W, you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, um, I will say his, his cows look too big uh, to be West African. So. <laughs> he's one of those hit one hit wonders bro he's yeah, bro. clearly he doesn't match the rule what the you fuck know? is this look at his abs how how deep his abs are at that size and then the quads i was i was honestly impressed I, I didn't even think i would be that impressed with him as i was and he did get tighter for the pro show i wasn't expecting it i wasn't expecting it at all i'll be honest i thought I thought the imbalance, there was a severe imbalance between his upper and lower body. Uh -huh. Then when I saw him on stage, I realized there is an imbalance, but it's not that much. It's not as bad as as it looks, you know, when you see him just in regular social media with Larry Wheels and stuff. It's it's not that bad. Like, looks everything is there. You know, if the legs were in condition, they're in condition. But if the legs, like, the front <laughs> was stripped, you wouldn't even notice the imbalance that much. Okay. And, and also... um. Most people don't realize how big Larry is because yeah. he doesn't look big on his own body because he had a big frame, right? But compared yeah. to other people, Larry had a huge frame. His shoulders are like this wide. So when I saw how big Nexilla looked compared to Larry, I was like, holy fuck. Ne Nexilla is a big is a big guy, you know? Nexilla I just think all these, all these guys coming from, you know, uh, IVV Pro Elite, yeah. you know, I, I got to give him credit because, you know, people used to say, oh, the elite, you know, it's not that great. But these guys are proving that, you know, they're great bodybuilders. You know, uh, you have Neck, Andrew, uh, Crizzo, uh, Vito. Yeah, yeah. Vito would have competed. I'd I like to see what Vito would look like. You know, you know, you know, how you, you, know how you, tell you, you know how you would tell your parents, I want McDonald's and they'd be like, I got McDonald's at home. Yeah, that's the elite. <laughs> the elite is <laughs> no, no. but but they, they they have some good guys but they all left now yeah you know? listen man if i don't get my card next year i might go i might compete in Prague or some shit I'll probably get you will probably get paid better in the I might, I might uh, elite to, pro league i might go to dubai if i don't get my car i'm gonna do it <laughs> why not you're gonna see me in in, in those uh classic trunks you know how they wear those. <laughs> <laughs> they wear the big speedos. You're gonna see me in the big speedos. You're gonna have a gold tan too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a gold tan. <laughs> hey, what did you guys think about the guy who plays second to Rubio in the super heavies? Oh, he looks see that guy. Shit, oh. guy? But, Fuck. but yo, he that's the best shoulder that I've ever seen in my life. I gotta be honest. With you. I know. He just, he just passed it. Go down. That's his deal. Right yeah, there, uh, I want to see the video. I, I think I saw a video. No, that was it. That was a video, though. No? You just passed it. Oh, I think it's right here. Oh, right there, right there. Well, yeah. have you ever seen shoulders that big? What the fuck is that? And he got let. He said, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I what I will say is, look at his back. Uh, no, no offense. Look at his back double though. Well, usually people with great shoulders like that don't have a back. Yeah, no, yeah. they're using their arms for the whole movement. Yeah. Yeah, listen from the front. This guy, this, this, you're not gonna see much better physiques from the front, but his back is so far behind, honestly. Like his lats, like he opens up and you don't, you, you, you can't see his lats. That's not, uh, that's not, it's gonna be hard to, um, to be. Yeah, I, I will, I will say this though, you know, um, I guess maybe because it's in, it's in, it's overseas, we're forgetting this guy is no different from Joe, Zade, myself. He just turned pro. Most people have just turned pro. Your backs are not, your right. back is not really up to par yet. You know, Rubio. I know Rubio just turned pro, but Rubio was a pro in the league, and he was he's been a pro for a while. He's not really a quote unquote amateur. He's not. You yet. know, um, this guy. This guy is just turned pro, so I think the back. Did he actually get a card? I thought. Oh, no, I don't think so. He did. He did. I don't think he, no, he, he did. did. Oh, oh really? He, he won his class. I saw. I, they didn't tag him on this, but well, I checked his profile. Oh. Is it overall though, or is it your class? I thought it was just the overall. No, it's class. Click on the tag. He, he, okay. he showed his card on there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna take your word, uh, Ken. 
Me too. Yeah, I, I scoped it out. I scoped it out. Trust me. Okay. I trust you, Ken. <laughs> Kenneth. <laughs> we, we, we're gonna it's, Ken, it's Kennedy, Stu. Don't, don't, don't ruin my name. Bro. Kennedy. Oh. Kennedy, yes. That's what I said. <laughs> this guy looks pretty good himself. This classic guy. I mean, look at the hair, though, bro. Fuck. <laughs> that gold tan. Wow. You got that dream tan on? <laughs> I can't tell if it's the lighting or the dream tan, but he looks he looks insane. Yo. Yeah, look at the chest, the, the fucking quads. I gotta be honest, man. The, uh, the Asian guys with the quads is is fucking insane, bro. Have you ever seen an Asian bodybuilder that didn't have crazy quads? I I, I can't think of any. Are there any in the wheelchair division? <laughs> I mean, he just talked about quads. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I guess he day uh, he day doesn't have <laughs> he day doesn't have the biggest legs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> that was just talking, job. Chris. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was one of those. Oh, fuck. Dude, was wild. Was wild. Was wild. You just hear Paul. You just hear Paul. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. I think. <laughs> I think I think this guy should have beat uh not to jump around, but I think this guy should have beat uh Ashkanani twice, if you ask me. Uh where that guy at? The uh 212 guy. Uh -huh. Yeah, but the the guy with the with the crazy waist. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I can't find him. Where the fuck he at? You know what I'm talking about. Uh I think he's uh he's in Spain. Oh, there we go. I don't know what this guy was doing in the middle, but um <laughs> I, I would have had the other, <laughs> <laughs> I would have had the guy in the guy in the left. So is he have a big ass head or is that just me? Bro, <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> he does have a big Yo, ass head. Yeah, the big head, yeah. Holy shit. Look at the picture on the bottom. That's what I was I was like, okay, am I the only one seeing that? Holy shit. Why why do they put him in the middle? Is what I'm what I'm trying to figure out. Like how did he make his way to the middle? It's like a buff <laughs> wee man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. Yeah, but, he does but, 10 but, but, Heidi, Heidi, that's what, what you're saying. Buddy. Hey. <laughs> that's that. They, they must have good growth wherever he at. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> medical grade, baby. That's medical grade. Okay. Ten, 20 it's like years. it's like it's like with the judging criteria we were talking about before, right? We we all know that shape and symmetry is 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 the deal of the day. So yeah. I don't understand myself. I don't understand how Ashkenazi beats this guy. Um, he's just as big. I don't get but, it. I don't get it. You know, he's, he's not as gnarly as Ashkenazi, but you know, based on the judging we've seen, um, that really shouldn't matter. So I, I don't know myself. I don't know if it's just because he's a bigger name now. I don't know. But compare compare the body parts, right? Like you said, um, the only thing bigger on Ashkenazi really is his waist. If you look at their arms, right? Arms are pretty pretty close. Legs are pretty even. It's really just the waist. Even shoulders are pretty even. I mean, Hadi is denser, but I mean, he's not. He's that got much more. Even. He's got less striations, though. Yeah, look at less the quad. lines. Yeah. I mean, he he hasn't flexed his right quad in like five years now. I don't know what's wrong there, but it's, there's nothing happening. <laughs> yeah, man. I got to be honest. I don't. I don't really. I, I don't see Ashkenazi winning that one. Only thing I've heard that is in person, he looks ridiculous, which I can I think they all look ridiculous in person. Shit. So I I just don't I don't get it. I don't get it. The guy in the middle though, I don't know why he's in the middle still. I'm trying to figure that out still. So. The only thing I can think the only thing I can think of, I've seen this happen in the 212 um sometimes is is where they dock a guy because they don't he's not a 212 like realistically, he's like it's like, oh, this person should be an open. He's tall. You know, yeah, he's tall. So yeah. maybe that's it, but I, I don't really know. I wasn't there, so I can't tell. Well, you know, he was in Classic uh, a year or two ago, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Is that that Zagarella guy? Yeah, yeah. Is that his name? Uh-huh. He was, he was in Classic a few years or a year ago. I was going to go to uh, – how you guys think uh, Mr. Horse would have placed had he done – had he not get diarrhea? <laughs> is, that, is that what happened? Yeah. He had diarrhea? 
You got the Milo's diarrhea, yeah. Dangerous <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. strain. Dehydration. We're yeah. all gonna go cancer. No, they said. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get Milos on a, on a podcast, but I don't know how much cancer. <laughs> Um, yeah, he had a game, dude. It's all it takes. 5k. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no. Um, what I was what happened, huh? What oh, happened yeah, to him? He, he said he, he released a statement. He said he had di diarrhea and vomiting, so he didn't, he didn't, he didn't feel comfortable, um, further uh, dehydrating. So I don't know what level of dehydration these men are these men are experiencing, but I've I've never do throw up or had diarrhea before. But uh, that's the same thing happened to Logan, right? For for for, for Olympia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, mm. I'm sure. Pattern. Pattern is emerging. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a pattern here. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the diarrhea protocol, I guess. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> hey, man, I, I, you guys have hospital had... drive. Yeah, hospital dry. Yeah, what like uh, <laughs> Brett, like Brett says, hospital Brett, dry. Brent Swanson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys know Brent Swanson, right? He has this yeah. thing. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna get hospital peeled. He's <laughs> <laughs> just so fucked up because he's like diabetic, right? He's type one diabetic, so he has like legitimate health issues all the time during yeah. prep. Bro, how the fuck? <laughs> how the fuck does he get that shredded being diabetic? <laughs> I, I mean, if you have no insulin, like you're not gonna get fat, right? So <laughs> it works out for him. But boy, boy, he's huge, bro. He's funny. yeah. He's the, he's the coolest dude ever, too. Yeah, that's no, he, the man. He's a PE teacher, dude. Could you imagine having that guy as your PE teacher in like high school? <laughs> I, that's the plug. That's the plug. That's the plug. I'm, I'm, I'm doing VH all day from him in high school. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Where, where do you think uh, Horse MD would have placed, though? Fourth. Seventh. Damn. What the fuck? <laughs> so, <laughs> behind I got offended. <laughs> uh, Who the fuck you think you are? <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> what is guy doing to me, <laughs> Holy shit! I like the way you're smiling at me. <laughs> you got, you got. No, a, that's true. You got a personal friendship. I mean, uh, no, but I just see it that way, honestly, bro. Really? Damn, okay. Yeah. Oh, Zay, yeah, because crazy. there's a lot of good guys in front of him. Samson, Grizzle, Nick Zilla, and Nathan. That's four people right there. Well, he I, beat Nathan. I, 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 I know, I know. He, yeah, he did, he did. Very good, debatably, I guess, but... I mean... I don't uh, know, man. I'm not so sold on the back, back end still. Yeah, when I see a professional that hasn't <laughs> hasn't had a like a good back double. That's a that's a big weak point for some somebody, you know. So I think right. he's, he's right. because yeah. of that, he might he might have fallen a few a few spots, you know. Yeah, and uh, that's just my opinion. Yeah. I think I think his width and his sheer size structurally. I don't actually think he's like extremely muscular, but I think structural size he has a lot of that. And uh, he has a well, no, he actually doesn't have a small waist, but he knows how to make mm. his look small in the poses. Yeah, you know mm. the way his quads flare out, it gives him a good X frame. I think I think he beats Nathan again, but the back is gonna have to come up if he's gonna beat any anybody else. I don't think he can he can move up. That's uh, why I said fifth. Fifth, that'll be behind. Uh, no, Nathan. Nathan. Yeah. Nathan I can see that. I can see that. Who, who got fifth? Who got fifth? It was the I don't I don't remember his name, but uh it was uh some uh some guy from Europe. And uh and then six was Roman. But it was like a, a European guy that got uh Oh fuck, you know what? I forgot Roman did that. He may not be able to beat Roman. This guy. Do you see the guy that, that won a thousand dollars? Oh Jan Turek? Yeah, okay. All right. I would, I would have still had, I would have still had Marcel fourth because he already beat Nathan the week before, and uh, Nathan was is actually, I feel like Nathan is a little bit worse here okay. than he was in Romania, so I can't see, I really can't see, you know, things switching the other way. I mean, it can happen, but the fact that he already beat him the week before, and Nathan is actually worse this week, mm -hmm. and if Marcelo stayed the same. I think it would still be the same the same result. 
because everyone's everyone still stayed in the same you know order in, in my opinion um nexilla was the one that just threw the wrench of the whole thing but mm-hmm. yeah i'll have him fourth see how good the lighting is of this show man yeah like yeah. man they could have done that at the olympia but they didn't yeah. that's why i think samson looked a little better at this show he didn't like necessarily come in better the lighting yeah. was just better i think so even yeah, think even the video quality, I think even the video quality looked better, but the, the light helps the video look better as well. Where where you got Horse MD placing us, uh, Stu? Mm, I don't know, dude. With the Milos handicap, like he's got to it's got to bump him up a bit. I personally don't think he should beat um, Nathan just because his back is like non-existent. You know, there's like nothing there. Um, and he wasn't like really, really conditioned like he like Nathan usually is. So I I would have put him in fifth, but he'd probably end up in fourth because uh, reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so you got him fourth. Yeah. Uh, hey, got- apparently, a Muhammad there. Um, he was trying to get a visa for this show and he couldn't. A uh, 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 Mofada. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. Do, do, do you like the way he hits his front double? I, I don't. I, I, I don't. Do. I, I don't like the twist. I think. I think the straight up looks better. I mean, that's why he probably does both. But yeah. Dude, I love the way he looks. There's the way he's put together, the proportions, the density he's got. He probably needs more tissue on his back, but mm-hmm. I mean, where would you guys? Where would you guys have put uh, Muhammad and Beirut in this in this lineup? Oh, Beirut! Mm-hmm. I think Beirut's got. I think Beirut's got everybody besides Samson. I don't think any of them being Beirut's. I think Beirut's is that good, personally. No, I, I still have. I still have the top two in front of Beirut's. I got to be honest with you. I got. I got. I got Nexilla and uh, Krizzle in front of Beirut's. I think the size, the size difference is is just too apparent between them. I can see that. I can see that. I would have said fourth as well. Yeah. Fourth or fifth? Yeah. Fourth. Okay. <laughs> I like Beirut's. Did Mo Fowler kind of he he looks like Stu a little bit. I think Stu got bigger legs though. Maybe yeah, that's why I like him. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. He got bigger hair too. But do you do you notice that like like we we tend to be biased like in conjunction to like our own physiques? You ever notice that? Like everybody has a little bit of bias compared to their own physique. Like they'll see somebody aesthetic and be like, oh, I like that guy. Because you're aesthetic, right? Or somebody who's like Ben still be like, I like this guy. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is, but I like this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not I can't put a finger on it. <laughs> can't put my finger on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is my boy. He did I think he did the Hawaiian. Did you see that Hawaiian classic? It had five guys in it. Yeah, oh, the the winner got twelve grand. Oh fucking the winner here in uh the winner in, in Prague in open got ten. Uh, less. What the <laughs> fuck? And, and and Logan only went against five people. That's wild. Yeah. That's insane. I, like I just like watching Logan times. lose just because he throws a hissy fit every single time. Mm-hmm. Um and it's pretty entertaining. Did he did Logan coach himself or uh is he working with someone now? Do we know? Uh last I know he he was self coaching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He used to work with Milos. I was gonna. Yes. I didn't know he separated from Milos. Yeah. Uh, he, oh yeah. He made a big deal but, about that. <laughs> yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. I like, didn't he had, he had, he had him hospital dry, bro. Yeah. <laughs> too dry. A little too dry. Yeah, I think he quit because of that. Yeah, that was before even much. weigh-ins last year, right? Yeah. 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 Didn't even, got, he didn't even make it on stage. Yeah. I gotta be food honest. Food poisoning. Like, food poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> it's always food poisoning. How often do you feel like that happens? How often do you feel like guys end up in the hospital like uh, a few days before the show? I don't think it happens uh, as much as me neither. Make it I don't. I don't know many people that that's happened to, unless it's something completely unre- unrelated, like like Brandon Curry, right? Like something like yeah. that. I've seen that more actually. You know. I don't. I don't think. I, I don't really find it that dangerous. I got to be honest. Like, I don't think diuretics are that dangerous. I mean, if if you have any kind of knowledge of what you're doing, I really don't think it's that dangerous. I got to be honest with you. There's people I who think- diuretics 
every day for their whole lives, you know? Like, I don't but, know. I mean, don't potassium think. sparing diuretics are, are, are not as dangerous. It's, it's when you start going into. No, it, it, and... it's actually the opposite. But I feel like the potassium yeah. are more dangerous because once the potassium level starts creep, creeping start up, that's when you get a heart attack. Yeah. Whereas Lasix is taking away everything, right? So, I mean, you're not going to have an imbalance. It's just going to be thirsty. And maybe... You need to get a heart attack or kidney failure, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a race to the bottom. <laughs> But like, I think I also think like Dick, there was a lot more. Now it's kind of an established base role, right? That like, if you're doing crazy stuff in peak week, you're probably it's not going to really change much, right? Well, whereas back in the day, right, peak week was kind of this magical thing where you do yeah. everything on the sun, and that's where you you start having a lot of these problems. You know, people dealing with, you know, a couple of, because I've seen on different podcasts, you know, I know Milos has talked about it with like Momo Beneziza. Yeah. Things that they were doing back then to kind of get into condition. And I mean, it's just, you're just threatening your life at that point. You're just rolling to die, you know? I just, I don't even understand that whole part of bodybuilding. Like the most I, I've ever done before a show and fucking nobody will believe me, but whatever. Like I've done a quarter tab of diazide. I did yeah. that at the USA's. I did that I believe you. at New York, and I did that in California. Because Joe like, Blue just doesn't like using diuretics yeah. with people. Compton, Compton, either he didn't use any with Joe, right? I don't think Joe took any diuretics. No, I didn't take any. Uh, when I did for the California, it was half, and then it was uh, for the USA. Like he felt like I shouldn't have even done that. So USA's, he didn't give me anything. I was yeah. actually the the day of. I drank like three liters of water. Yeah. Bro, from from my experience, the more that race I've taken, the worse I've looked every time. Yeah, like, you know, I scratch my head and I wonder, just like with the drug stuff, like we talked about previously on this podcast, like is is doing more gonna get me to the next level? Are there other guys who are gonna like be doing more shit, and that's why they look better? I just like I don't know. My my sense is probably not because I can know I know I can just go haywire, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've actually tried it out for myself because I, I'm one of those people, like, I can't believe you unless I know for myself. So I, I've tried every dose you could think of. And uh -huh. literally, the more I take, the worse I look. And I, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, uh, tell people not to take more drugs. Than I, I don't care what the fuck anybody does. I'm just talking Me either. Personal, <laughs> yeah. I, from, from personal experience, if you want to take five grams of test, Go ahead. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. But from my experience, I've already tried it. You know, my best results always come from uh, uh, one gram of test. That's not what I always do. But I'm telling you from how I just how I look. I always look best at that. Now, as bodybuilders, we get in our own head. So like you just said, I think, yo, can I look better if I take a gram, a gram and a half and I do it and I don't look better? I've done. Tell you, I'll tell you what stops me from doing it. I need to get gyno surgery done. And if I ever get that done, like get my glands cut out and everything, I'm I'm gonna give her a go real quick just to see what happens, and then I'll probably off. just go back, you know. Yeah. But, but but like that's what I'm worried about. Like I have sensitive nipples. It's a little I've, too much information, but <laughs> I've done. No, you, so someone's gonna cut that. <laughs> I've done. I've got sensitive Fuck. nipples. Bro, I've tried two grams of tests. I've tried three grams of tests. And I literally looked worse from it. So I didn't stay on it. Once once I felt it, I'm like, okay, I just gained 10 pounds of water weight. And I don't I don't want to work out because I feel so lethargic. I just mm -hmm. went back down, you know. But somebody can't tell me that, oh, that's not going to make you better. How do you know? Have you done it? No. But I, I just know. I'm like, I don't believe you. So I'm going to try it myself, right? So I tried it. I looked like shit. So I went back down. It's just common sense. So anybody, I see a lot of people say, oh, these pros lie. They take more. I'm like, bro, so try it. Why does it, it, it doesn't matter what they tell you. You just try it for yourself. And I guarantee you, you're going to take three grams of test and you're not going to look like Stu. You're not going to look like Joe. You're not going to look like Zay. You ain't going to look like Paul or Ken or me. So then you, you're going to have to just go back down. It's just, you know, so you don't have to believe anybody. You don't have to believe Ian. You don't have to believe Nick Walker. Don't believe him. Call them liars if you want. Just fucking try it. And if when you don't look like Nick or Ian, then you'll be like, okay, maybe that's not the answer, right? <laughs> so yeah, they'll probably still think it's that's what they're doing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking copium, dude. Like, 
I mean, uh, uh, Boston told me that later in his life, right? Because in, in early on, he was like, I don't believe that people are taking this these dose. I, I believe they're taking more. And later on, he was like, honestly, man, it's just it's mostly genetic. Some people are going to be 300 pounds. Some people are going to be 190 taking the same amount of shit. So at the end of the day, taking three grams is, isn't going to make you Miss Olympia, whereas somebody can do it on one gram, you know, but... It's just the, the joy of the cars. But I think if you focus more on everything else, you know, you'll be a lot better off. Like one time. Huh? That's why I said it's at the end of the day. And this is what annoys me the most about bodybuilding is everyone thinks you can just force bodybuilding, you know, do it with with drugs or whatever. It is still genetics yeah. at that level. It is still genetics. You know, we're talking about next. I bet. I've seen his videos. He squatted like six plates for two reps and they cut the video. Yeah. He's not doing that on a regular basis. <laughs> you know, like it's genetics at the end of the day. And you know, the cream will always rise to the top. Most guys were, we've all been in this industry for a little bit. We all talk. Most people are doing the same thing, man. Most guys are doing the same thing, but we all respond differently. Yeah. And I just think it's genetics at the end of the day. Like that's it is it is what it is, you know. I, I think so. Yeah. So you know, I think I think we should adopt it. Like the the kids that are watching this that are not really as advanced as we are should also know the drugs do work. But I mean, the majority of it is the food. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you ain't eating to get big, you're not gonna get big. Period. So sure. instead of, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there because we're talking about the drug dosages and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can take two, three grams of test if you want to. If you ain't eating 10,000 calories, it ain't going to work for you. You know what I mean? So you're better off taking that one gram of test and eating six, 7,000 calories for a couple of years and just grow, you know? 100%. <laughs> the simplest way to put it is something, uh, Seth, Seth uh, what's his name? Ferozzi. Uh, Ferozzi said, my, my bad. He was like, imagine, imagine steroids are, are is like the brick, right? And the the food are, are the employees. It doesn't matter how much bricks you have. You can't build the house without the employees, right? So you can have uh, fucking two grams of of bricks, but if you have zero em employees, the bricks won't do shit. It's not gonna build itself, right? So if you don't have the food, you can take all the gear in the world you want. Ain't shit gonna happen. He's just gonna nope. look the same, just puffier, maybe more gyno. So I think it's that simple. So nobody's saying the gear doesn't work. If it didn't work, nobody would be taking it. Absolutely. You know, but but what it what it's gonna do, you can't out 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 drug out drug the, the process. It's gonna take the food, it's gonna take the training, but it's also gonna take the time, you know, and the time is where uh uh genes playing genetics, right? It might take me 10 years, it might take somebody else one year. But you can't rush it regardless. You know what I'm saying? You can't out drug the process and be like, I'm gonna be a pro next year. Well, it's just not any cars. Whereas maybe Stu or Joe could do that. But I mean, you should definitely try at least once. Like <laughs> Body was talking about. <laughs> fucking send her, figure out your bad idea and stop. Yeah. <laughs> the secret stuff, you know. Granted, bro, people told me this already, but of course you're not gonna listen. So I didn't listen. I'm like, ah, I wanna find out for myself. So I tried it out and uh, nothing really came came from it besides just you know, just wasting a bunch of I, money. I won't coach myself because I know I'll go off the off the rails. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just I just That's know sure. we have the personality. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but when I first when I first hired Justin, I remember looking at the doses and I'm like, I'm like, hmm, are you serious? <laughs> I feel like you need a little more than that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a big guy. What are you trying? And then now, like from what I did for myself, I'm literally back back down to the exact doses he gave me. Where I had to go up and up and up to see for myself. And I'm like, you know what? He picked those doses for a reason, right? And it's funny because Justin is so calm and simple. You almost think he's not thinking that hard. But a lot of thinking goes behind it. it, it it's also his doses and, and protocols are specific to that person. So things about me, I didn't realize. He already he already saw it. So he he didn't he never gave me like insulin right and I'm like why why does he give me insulin I know he gives some of his other clients because I, I've talked to some of the clients why not me right but then I I did the insulin myself and I gained so so much weight so fast it's almost ridiculous bro I I gained ten pounds the next day another ten pounds to the point that I'm like okay I can't even breathe at this point right so my body type with that it just I'm I, I'm a water buffalo so I can't do shit like that so he already saw that he's probably like damn. 
that's what he's taking and he looks like this and he's holding this much water, there's no way I'm giving him insulin. So he already was able to see that. You know, so sometimes you have to trust the coach. They just have that experience that they they already I, know. I, I checked in today and I'm 10 pounds up for my Sunday. Yeah. And Justin's like, uh, you know, as much as I want to push the food or increase the food a little bit, he's like, I'm going to hold off one more week. <laughs> I, I, I don't want you to be immobile in the gym. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm all for it. But, Wait, you, know, you put on 10 more pounds? You, call, you know, like. Where did you it? put, where did, where did you put on 10 pounds? Like, what are you at now? So my ball shriveled and then my legs got a little bit bigger. What do you weigh now? <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was, I was 284 this morning. I was 274 last night. Oh, okay. I thought you put on 10 on top of the 280. What happened? I thought you put on 10 more pounds over like the max weight you were, you were at. No, 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 no. I my max weight was 288, so I'm still under it. So I'm kind of going back to my max. Knowing knowing Joe, man, and knowing Compton, Joe's going to be 300 in like a couple of weeks. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you find the fucking fan, hating life, back pumps like crazy. Well, because the way Joe is, if you give him the food, he's going to eat it. He's not going to be like, oh, I don't want to. He's just going to eat it. So he's not going to be like, bro, I, I kind of feel tired. If if Compton gives him the food, he's gonna eat it. So he's gonna eat his way to three hundred pounds, you know. And <laughs> I am <laughs> I'm a, I'm a for a fact. And then, but the good thing is, you can you can get the fat off too. So it's not like it's not a big deal if your weight goes that heavy. Well, just Justin's big on getting me to the weight is like kind of quick, and then you'll have me hold it. Yeah, yeah. So you'll have me he'll have me hold it for like the remainder of like the two three weeks or whatever before I come off everything and stuff. That's we'll the do that. where, that's the point where like you, you don't even have any cravings because the food you're so over the food you're like a cheat meal a cheat meal for you is skipping a meal at that point you know what I'm saying like eating less like I, I remember like I would have Saturdays as like my my looser diet days where I have a couple of cheat meals and literally I would be like I'm gonna take this time to eat a less less meal to eat like two less meals because I'm so tired of eating. Yeah. So I, I actually, so, so I can enjoy a cheat meal. What I'll do is on Saturdays, like you said, mm -hmm. my meals are like, I'll take away a lot of the carbs and fats from like three of the meals mm -hmm. and I'll just eat a stupid big ass, like fat <laughs> fuck meal. So I'll get my protein in and then I'll enjoy the shit out of my, my, my meal. And then I'll just go back on plan the next day. But like the, I'll always make sure I get, Minimum of what the planned calories are for the day with yeah, the protein. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm supposed to eat six thousand calories, I'm gonna eat a minimum of six thousand. And if I get over, I don't really give a fuck. But as long as I'm eating the minimum, I'm fine. That's smart because what I would do is, I remember when I would have the uh, like, I would give myself a full cheat day, and if my calories are high, I would end up losing weight on the cheat day because I might be only eating three, four cheat meals versus six, seven clean meals a fucking pound of rice a pound of potato right so I, I would actually lose weight when i go to when i go to cheat which is you don't want to do that neither right you kind of want to hold the weight so that happened to me last week huh that was you <laughs> that happened to me last week <laughs> dropping three pounds last week doing that I, i'm a, uh i'm gonna I'm go into the questions we got we got a few questions did i delete did it should delete Hold up, let me go to the archives. Hey, it was funny though. Me and Paul did our cheat meal together yesterday, and I was like, "Yo, Paul, after we went to Lucille's, and I, uh, I was like, I'm a, are you down for Cheesecake Factory?" And he was like, "Yeah, I'm down for that. Uh, you can get one." I was like, "No, nah, I'm gonna get two. He's like, "Are you really gonna fucking get two? I'm like, "Well, yeah, I'm gonna get two. <laughs> he said, oh, no. oh, "Fuck, now I gotta get fucking two. <laughs> well, okay, let's start <laughs> off with uh. <laughs> That's a funny question. Uh, how much insulin is too much? <laughs> <laughs> segue. That's a good segue from um, Horse MD. Enough to, <laughs> enough, <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> I was going to say it. You That's know what? Close. Enough if uh, you get the runs before you do yeah. stage prep. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't I don't think you can give like a real answer, right? It depends who the fuck you are. For me, just like if I do 10 IUs pre-workout, 
I gained fucking 10 pounds by that night. So <laughs> I, I don't really want to do insulin at all. But maybe somebody like Stu could do, because I feel like Stu has a good metabolism. Zay got been like ten or twelve before. That's just highest I've gone, for like pre workout. Yeah, I'm I interested to find out, bro. Soon, soon I'll let you know. Yeah, I don't think Zay does. <laughs> uh, how about how about Ken? I've never done it either. I'll be honest. <laughs> These guys are useless. Man. Jeez, hey, come on, <laughs> <laughs> live a little. Come <laughs> on, yeah, have some fun, guys. All right, how about um? How about Paul? Uh, most I've done is ten pre, ten post. Yeah, Paul, Paul got a good metabolism. I feel like he can handle he can handle some some slim. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, Joe, Joe, did Joe answer? Uh, uh, as as of recently, it's eight uh, pre. Okay, no, no post. If you're going uh, 10, ten post, I don't I don't like post. I've never done like, that. I don't feel like I, I get anything from post. I got to be honest with you. I, I get pretty fucking hungry. After oh that. yeah, you'll get hungry. So like, hungry. yeah, so like, so I'll chug that like post workout, you know, shake after I do it, and then like, give me an hour, hour and a half, and I'm like starving. Yeah, but don't you get hypo in the shower when you come? <laughs> no, nah, I usually eat my my meal right after. Like yeah. after that shake, like I said, about an hour later, I'll, I'll eat my next meal. So it's okay, kind of home. okay. Huh? But if if, if, in, like, if 15... I wait like two hours, I'll go hypo. If if you're getting up to like 15, 20 units, like pre or post workout, and you're getting what like it, how much is too much? It's like if you were getting good results on like five or six before, and now you're at fifteen, your insulin sensitivity is probably fucks, you know. So it's you need to like back off your food or something. Okay, uh, but here's the thing, right? Why is the question how much is too much? Like. I feel like most of us, our goals is to get the most results off the least, right? So you only go up if you have to, right? Let's yeah. say if you do a cycle, you gain 20 pounds of muscle. Then you start the next cycle and you're not making any progress. Then you go up, right? But if you continue to add muscle, why would you, you know what I'm saying? Like, would you just go up anyways? Well, no, My let's, let's be clear. I don't know about you. But my goal is not to get the most from the least. My goal is to get the most. Period. Oh, okay. Okay. Full stop. Whether that's from the most or not, you know. But you, so, but you build up to that, right? Like, so you'll do a dosage yeah. from that. Then the next time you do it, you're going to go up. We go full stop. Yeah, you work your way up on everything. Yeah, right? But like, you know, you don't just go from like five units to ten units of insulin, like, and don't change anything hey. else. You're going to screw yourself up, right? But like, yeah. if, oh. if you have worked your way up there just to get just to feel anything. You know, you're probably got shitty insulin sensitivity, and you're probably starting to get fat, and you're probably going to look like Beatty soon. So, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> like a water buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess the most from the least is not as accurate. Let's say this, right? I try to push it as much as I can without getting so uncomfortable that I can't perform or sleep. Basically, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, that's, that's actually going to negate your progress then. So that that's exactly. still, yeah, we're, we're on the same page. So, so literally, I'll push the food and gear. You, But it's usually the food that kind of fucks me up. But let's say I'll push the food and gear to the point that, uh, of course, you're going to be uncomfortable, right? But I'll continue to push it until I'm like, okay, at this point, I'm going to go backwards because I can't train legs properly because I'm, I'm laying down huffing and puffing between sets. You know, I can't yeah. catch my breath. I'm waking up every 30 minutes when I'm sleeping because I'm so, you know, because I'm so uncomfortable. At that point, I'm like, I think, I think I'm gonna start to go backwards. So let me bring down the food or let me not, let me, let me bring down, you know, the GH or bring down whatever I feel like is contributing to it. So I guess that'll be, I, I want to get the most without, with the least side effects. Is that, I don't know, I guess. With yeah. Personally, yeah. when I, when I've run things, it's, I'll start off with whatever the base is the first time I try it. Mm -hmm. Then each time I go back on it, it's a little bit more than the last exactly. time. It's kind of like lifting weights. Like 100%. you're gonna you're gonna do three plates on the bench. You're gonna try to go up a little bit over time. Exactly. You're, it's just you you adjust, so you need to. And then you, and then you you hit a weight. Maybe you hit four or five, and you barely get one. And you're like, okay, that was too heavy. Let me go back down. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, basically with with drugs, same thing. I go up. Okay, like I said, a gram was good. I was like, okay, I got to do a gram and a half now. Then I'm like, ah. 
I don't like how I feel. I feel like I'm regressing or I'm not, I don't feel like I can give my all. So let me go back. Yeah. So I think that's the better, not just for, 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 I think for any, any, any drug. I think some people just shouldn't use insulin period though. Like baby, you, like you don't, you don't use it. Do you? No, because it's, it's, I can't use it for more than a, a couple of days. Right. Yeah. Maybe on leg day. Okay. Let, let's say maybe I can use it one day a week on leg day. Yeah. Just work very day. specifically. That That's the only spot. And I, and I say like, I don't know who this person is asking a question, but you know, I, I, for me, I consider it to be like one of the last things, like you want to max out everything else you're doing, your training, your food, you know, just regular, regular gear before yeah. you even start going into that realm. Because if yeah. you're not getting the most out of all that, then doing that, to me, it's kind of like you're you're just basically just stacking things on top, and you're not maximizing anything. So, that's a big that's a big issue. Pe- people get like so like they have so much fun with the drugs, they get so into it. They just want to yeah. try shit just because, just to try it. It's not really fitting into their program. They just want right. to start adding shit. Like anytime a client says, "Yo, what else can I add to get bigger?" I'm like, "You're already fucked up right there." Like, how how do you get bigger? You have to eat more food. You're not, you know. So it's like, yeah. why do why do you think you're gonna get bigger because you added anadrol? Well, I mean, you are gonna gain like five pounds like in a couple of days, but <laughs> but that's not real tissue. Some good shit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it sure feels yeah. like it though, right? <laughs> yeah, so it does. I'm not gonna lie. But but what you should I'm be about, adding, about ten pounds, guys. But the real truth is, we all. <laughs> We all know here, like what you need to do. You need to go from ten ounces of rice to fucking twelve ounces, you know. And then I, I guarantee you're gonna add some tissue from that. But nobody wants to do that because it's harder, you know. It's easy to pop an anadrol, you know. Okay, and not both. Oh, well, yeah. Now, <laughs> now, now, <laughs> the guy who asked that, he's actually a wrestler, believe it or not. So I don't think a wrestler should do insulin. I don't think that's a good. Uh, just uh, from my opinion. Yeah. I don't think you have to be that jacked. Uh, but uh, let me see. Let me look for a good one. Do do oh. mushrooms with... Okay, I, I see what's going on. Do mushrooms with Mike Tyson. Smoke weed with Obama. Why would you want to smoke weed with Obama? Or do but throw me in jail. jail. <laughs> 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 or, or do Molly with Tiger King. Oh, you, you got to do Molly with Tiger King. You have to do that. Do Molly Tiger. That's probably the highest risk option there. But like, yeah, most fun. He 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 looked like you know how to have a good time. I got to be honest with you. Yeah, but he's gay, dude. Oh, like he's, you got to be careful. Yeah, be careful. Be careful. Around him. He's gay. And he has a lot of guns. Why, why and you? No <laughs> sense. Mike Tyson. You choose Mike Tyson to be biting people's ears off. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, but I, I kind of forgot that. So he, he, he might slip something in which I'll take. I'll take a spin. I'll take a spin on this. I feel like I feel like you know any of these options you're breaking bread with that person, right? So yeah. who's the most powerful person on that list? I think I think I want to have a bomb. If if you smoke weed at Obama, you you know you're basically that's basically you have you have correlations with the president. You know what I mean? A former president. That's yeah. that's a good person to have in your pocket. So that's that's what <laughs> you might say. Get- same here. I would smoke a joint with Obama for sure. Yeah. He has some nasty stories. Yeah, sure. <laughs> if he's high, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna get the real Obama. You're gonna get the yeah. Obama. He's gonna tell me some real that. confidential he, information. He you know, what I'm not supposed to know. He might then, start breaking uh, down, like talking about kids he drone bombed or some shit. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe if, maybe if you were doing mushrooms with Obama, then he would like get yeah, self conscious. Yeah, I do. I I do like. Uh, I'm definitely a big Mike Tyson fan, but. I feel like Mike is going to be talking some crazy shit that you're not going to really understand on, on mushrooms. Mike, Mike gets really, he goes in that Kai Green mode too sometimes. So he probably <laughs> won't, he probably won't even know what's going on. Yeah. So I might go because, because of Tiger King, I don't know what his intentions are. I think I'm going to go uh a weed with O'Breezy. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when he's high, he's you know he's gonna be in that in that breezy mode. Let me see what you got. Favorite favorite staple. That's kind of boring. All right, Are you guys coming to the Masters USA's? I, I want to, but it's getting kind of late. What time is the finals? Four. Four. 
Oh, fuck. Raph right. looks pretty good in the Supers. R- Rafa has it. He looks incredible. Did uh, you watch the show, Zayn? Yeah. Okay, well, good. Just, he just sent me pictures. He sent me pictures yesterday. I was like, I don't think anybody's going to be that big and that hard. So if I'm going to be honest, uh, I, I, think, I, I don't know anybody else doing the show. But um, Well, I, I know one other guy, but um, I don't think he's going to be that hard. So had on over 20 pounds since last year. Holy shit. Yeah. How, how, old, how old is he? Uh, 36 or 38, something like that. That's not, not that old. Master. He's not that old. But. That's not Masters, bro. You got to be You got to be about 45. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You got to be at least. No, there is a 35 plus. Really? Yeah, yeah there yeah. is 35. I, I, I never agree to 35 plus. I think it's sure yeah. 40 minimum. I'll tell you what. You look at Raph, maybe. you think he's over 40. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. that man's been through some shit. He is a hardworking dude. <laughs> How is 35 Masters? 35 is young, isn't it? Get that. I don't get that either. They might as well make North it America. Make yeah, it North America's bad guys do Masters 35 plus and then op- you know, regular open. I'm like, this doesn't make sense, you know? Like, if you're Masters, just go into Masters, man, you know? 35, bro. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> like, I don't even understand. Like, for Masters, is it a Masters IFBB Pro card? That's what it is, right? No, it's just a regular. Card. Card. You're being open. It's a regular pro card. It's gonna be open. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. For, wow. Isn't that what Phil Clahar uh, did? I think Phil Phil turned pro master. But um, I mean, I he, mean, that's it's, it's very open. similar to being like a bantam weight kind of guy and going in the pro league, right? Like, yeah, they can still be an open. Take it easy. Oh, wow. I you can compare Bantam weight to Masters. I know they have like Masters pro shows, but no, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give an extreme example. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's wrong. I had no idea. I thought there was just like Masters because I see Masters pro shows, right? Yeah, they yeah, exist. Man. It's just yeah. still like I don't, dude. I don't. I don't really have a problem with that shit. Like giving cards out to the older guys now, because like if they're good, they're gonna make an impact in the pro league. Yeah. If they're not, like you oh, know, when, I, when I went and, to when I went to Paul's master show. The guy that won, he was good. He was fucking was that, crazy, dude. Was that wasn't that Ken something? It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. In person, he looked like a like a almost yeah. like a he little like brother of Phil Heath he kind thought, of thing. Yeah, I think no, thirty five is young. I just think thirty five. I think I don't have a problem with that. I just think thirty five is young. To I think thirty five is young. I think I think I think forty forty and up. I think yeah. forty and up. I think they're the difference between a thirty year old body and a forty year old body. But a thirty year old body, a five year old body. Yeah, that's that's close. You know? is like your peak, right? So it's when you're starting to peak as a bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah. 40, you know, at least forty, like it's it's more fair. But I feel like thirty five is not it's it's not it's not right to me. But it's so uh, weird also, that, like if I'm gonna if thirty five is a peak, like I got a decade until I'm gonna be peaking. <laughs> yeah. uh, dude, I do not have the time, like the patience for this. That's that's tough. Fuck. <sighs> no, but um, flies, dude, it flies. <laughs> I think yeah, it does. Flies. I think the top the top masters guys are competitive and open. I mean, just from what I've seen, what I've seen, I yeah. think the top masters guy. I mean, well, yeah, but like Phil, we talking about Phil Clahar won a he won. Well, he didn't even win the Masters Olympia, but he still he won Orlando. He, you think about that, right? Yeah. So the guy that got third or second at the Masters Olympia won a open pro show. He got he got third. Think about that. If the third best guy that the Masters owe was able to win an open pro show that tells you, right? Obviously, the, the, the top five guys, Max Charles was like f- four second. Four second. second. So the top guys can win open pro shows, you know. Bro, you, you know, because you're older doesn't mean you, you don't have like a... like. And a- most Masters people aren't just starting out. Most Masters people have been in the game for a bit. It's yeah. just the reason why I say 35 is because the average age, you know, back in the day, like 10, 15 years ago, the average age to turn pro was like, you know, maybe 25, 26. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's in your 30. You know, when you hit like 29 to like 32 is when people turn pro. Right. So to me, it doesn't it doesn't really make sense that, you know, if the if that's the average age of someone turning pro, why would you have a master's pro qualifier that is literally two to three years right behind the average age? It doesn't make sense. Most, you know, a, better most, gap, you know? a lot of Olympians, you know, these past few years have already been in their 40s. You had, yeah, you had Sean Roden win win in his forties. You had uh, Bonag, uh, Roly Winkler, um, Brandon Curry. I mean, I'm sure there's more guys uh, in their forties. And uh, Big Ramy is, I think, 39, maybe. I don't know. So yeah, 
if the top Olympians are are already in their forties, then thirty five is you know pretty young. Do you think? Do you think the guys who are like only thirty right now and doing very very well at the Olympia, like Derek and Nick, do you think they're gonna have that kind of longevity to like go for another decade in the sport like they are now? It kind of depends on them, really. I, I, I think. think it's very I think the way, yeah, when you start and how you train, I think the way Derek trains, I think he'll have longevity. And uh, and Nick changed his training. Mm-hmm. He still he still had a couple injuries, even with his change training. So I don't know how durable his body is, but I think I think Derek will have the longevity for sure. But uh, not everybody has that because depending how you know, if you start at fifteen, I'm, I don't know how long you, you can go. I don't think you can go to forty five if you start at fifteen. Yeah, I mean, bodybuilding is, is brutal on the body, man. Let's be real. Like, any answer natural doesn't matter. It's it's just that poundage on the body over years and years over time. So when you start, also makes a difference. If you start at 16, I mean, can you really go till you're 45? I mean, maybe if you change your training. Even Dexter Jackson, is, when you talk about his longevity, he had to change his training at some point. Right, right. Uh, because he, it wasn't working anymore, what he was doing, you know, when you earlier started. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like you said, it depends on them, but I think when you start also is is also also matters. But there's a point where where you start is just like too late. Like if you're starting at like 48, like bro, yeah, smoke, you know, <laughs> <I think laughs> I all points. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, Dexter Dexter turned pro when he was I think 28, maybe 29. So really? I yeah, he was younger than that. He was man. younger. Oh, really? Yeah, he turned pro. Know, I'm not sure, but he was younger. I thought I thought he turned pro in uh, I thought it was '99. No, no, '99. No. no, he was at the Olympia no. by like the '90s. Yeah, into the '90s. Okay, okay. Then, then completely disregard what I said. I I have no clue what you're talking about. I gotta look this up now. Please hold. <laughs> and he won. Dexter won North Americans. That's that's when he turned pro. Um, yeah, he did. He was North American, but. I did the math one time of the year he turned pro, and I thought I had twenty eight, but I might be I might be way off. So don't don't uh, don't quote me. I know Sean Roden turned pro in his thirties, but he he was yeah, but he was bodybuilding. Uh, I think as a teenager, and then his pop his dad died. He had took uh, like a ten year break, a uh, a really long break, and he came back and turned pro in his thirties. So technically, he had some experience, but his body was fresh because you know. Okay, so he won. He won the overall in '98 at the North Americans. So you are correct, Ken. Uh, and then he was at the Olympia in 1999. Wait, so if he what what year was he born? So we have to see what age he would be at '98. Probably sometime in the 1800s. Nineteen sixty nine. Nineteen sixty nine, bro. Like, Holy, I can't even do that math. So that would be. Fucking, 98 Martin Luther King was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so that he was you're right, he was 29. That's crazy. Was 29. Was he kidding? Holy shit. Are you serious? Wait, so then when he what? won he was in the Olympia? Uh, 2008. 2008. 39. So damn. I, I didn't yeah, that, that's crazy. 39, yeah. That's crazy. Wait, what? What well, so, so I'm blown. I'm mind blown right now, bro. So you know what well, that he played this slow game, right? So that's why it took him so long. <laughs> it, that just means he was a lot older than everybody probably thought he was, because <laughs> that means he was really the same age as most of the guys who were already at the Olympia. But hear me out, hear me out. Is this really correct? If he won the light heavyweight the year before, how did he get to the Olympia the next year? As a light uh, well, he, he in nineteen ninety nine night of champions, he got third and top three qualified you back there back then. So uh, I'm looking at like his whole contest still, history. But, well, but well, still, still, even still, as a light heavyweight in the '90s, yeah, uh, <laughs> fucking you know? crazy. Well, if, yeah. if you look, if you look at Tonio, right? If Tonio was two fourteen, two fifteen on New York Pro, and he was way more straight at this Olympia, he might have been lighter than that at this Olympia. Oh, he was, yeah. He yeah, said, you know, he said he was like just under two twenty at the the New York, and he was like lighter significantly than that here so so if you go back to 98 at the at the night of champion if dexter is a, let's say a, maybe one inch shorter than tonio and he's like 210 i mean he he probably looks big for dexter you know like on his frame maybe 
at two ten, he probably looks good enough to looks big enough to to get top three, which is impressive though. Bro, he beat Mark. I'm looking at the I'm looking at he my list. Rule. He beat Marcus Rule. What? At, wow. at a light heavy. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> what? Damn. That's impressive. Uh, you got to give him some. I'm looking at some of the names on this list. I don't know, man. He beat Dennis James, Tom Prince. <laughs> Whoa. Burke. He bought that heat. We lost game fifth. <laughs> <laughs> he bought that heat. I, listen, to go from a light heavy to beating those guys a year after is, is crazy. It's crazy. I mean, the way I, I thought, I mean, even though he had the longevity, I thought young Dexter, he had like a a roundness and a pop to his muscle with that condition that was pretty pretty crazy looking. Yeah. All right, well, you got to give him respect for that. I did not know that was the – that's – wow, that's – you got to give Dexter respect for that. That's crazy. He played the – He's one of my favorites, man. One of the yeah, – he's too. definitely the best I to started, ever do it. I started because of him, you know. He used to go to coast on uh, my gym. I trained legs with him one day. Yeah. He, he, that was really fun. He was super cool. All right. Would from Jehovah Liftness? Would you? That's that's uh that's angels, eh? Yeah, yeah. I uh, see it. He said, "Would you rather win ten Arnolds or one Olympia?" One Olympia. One Olympia. Uh, really? Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Arnold. The Arnold is three hundred grand, bro. We talking about ten or ten times? We talking about three million? Uh, what, what would that equal? Or, Man, none of us do this for our money. For money, you know this. Speak for yourself, Zay. I'm messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, if you got into bodybuilding to make money, nah, goddamn, no, man. No, but, you're not gonna go for. Think of it this way. Think of it this way, though. Think of it this way, Zay. Mm -hmm. One Olympia, you you won, right? And that's it. No one knows. But if you won ten Arnolds, that means you were dominant for ten years. That's ten years as a top freaking pro, man. And if if, if the Arnold if the Arnold is given three hundred grand now in ten years from now, okay, if they keep it three hundred grand, you you made three million, but we know they're not going to keep it there. It's going to go up, right? So you might end up five six million. Who knows? You know, and that's ten, that's ten years. Ago. And because you said, oh, if you're winning the Arnold, that means you're like top three, top five in the Olympia, anyways. Yeah. So hey, I was thinking that Arnold. Nobody, nobody forgets Kevin Lavoni or Flex Wheeler or Sean Ray yeah. or Chris Cormier, but people do maybe forget. Uh, I don't Dickerson. know who won one, one Olympia. Uh, what's that? Samir Banu. I was talking to Paul about that yesterday. I was like, dude, this Dickerson. guy was at Three Nation Gym and nobody knew who he was. You see what I mean? Chris wow. Dickerson. Yeah. Boom, Chris Dickerson. So I'm they good friends with Samir. Samir is a cool guy, though. He He's a really cool he guy. But I, like I felt bad. Uh, <laughs> Damn, that's no one, no one even. Yeah. Franco won one, right? I think no one even remembers that. No, he nobody even two. knew. You Did see? he win two? Uh, no, nobody even. Nobody. He won two. Yes, two. I think yeah. one two. So think yeah. about that. He's, but if you win, yeah, yeah. So, so there you if go. You, <laughs> if you win ten Arnolds, not only not only does your your, your pockets your pockets going to remember that. But people are gonna remember you, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I mean, it's a tough one. I get it. Everybody wants to be Miss Olympia, but I mean, it's not. I would. I, I might go ten Arnolds. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like the Olympia and the Arnold prize money has kept up with inflation, kinda. But like the rest of the pro shows, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like, it's still ten, yeah, million, just like it was twenty plus years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, they they gave fifth place one grand. I'm like. I'll be like, yo, just, just, just hold that. Just, just, just add it up for for next year. Yeah. <laughs> all that shit, you know. Come on, bro. One, next yeah, year, I'll, just, I'll put that towards my pro card next year because I have to pay <laughs> yeah, for that. <laughs> Fuck. Anyways, uh, how how's that everybody doing today? On Saturday. Let's Man, I haven't I haven't had caffeine in like six days now, and I'm That's... feeling kind of tired. Um, not gonna lie. Why right, <laughs> a little <laughs> detox? <laughs> Let's do that. I'm a caffeine addict. I can't fucking go without caffeine. Awesome. At least 200 megs a day. At least. I, I am I too. I do a monster for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this this is a pretty simple one. Pretty uh, straightforward question. What's everybody's goal for next year, 2024? Uh, let's say, I guess, you say bodybuilding goals? Or, uh, it don't matter. This is California. Your oh, okay. Hell yeah, Joe. Mr. California. 
This is how rivalries begin. It's right there. Hey, good, good luck, Stu. Uh, I'm wishing you good luck. <laughs> hey, I'm going to come crash with you, buddy. I don't want to pay for a hotel, okay? Oh, yeah. I'm, I got you. Right here on the couch. Right here on the couch. No problem. Uh, let's go, uh, Paul. What's your goal for uh, 2024? Uh, probably win my first Masters show and try to get first call out to California. There you go. Joe, yeah. Joe, Joe compared you to a Bantamweight earlier. Just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. He texted me told me there not to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, how, about, how about Ken? Colossus Ken. Um, I mean, bodybuilding wise, uh, just a successful off season, you know, like I really want to really want to put on some good size this off season, you know, to, to prepare for 25, but also like in New Jersey, I mean, I'll put it out here. I'm kind of trying to do something in a way that gives back, uh, bodybuilding wise, uh, in the state. Cause you know, buddy, like bodybuilding is dying here on the East coast, like oh, yeah. dying. Oh, yeah. and there's only like maybe four or five bodybuilding pros now currently in New Jersey, which is Damn. crazy. Um, so I'm trying to find some kind of way, you know, set up some kind of thing to kind of give back to the community a little bit and just kind of promote it in some fashion over here. I, I don't know what that's going to be. I'm still thinking about it, but yeah, those are my two things. You I know? like that. that. That's very uh, selfless of you, uh, Ken. Wait, Ken, are you competing next year? No, nah, no, nah, I'm taking a whole year off. Okay. Off season. Uh, Zaid, uh, first of all, I think somebody's trying to break in your car, but uh, no, no, that's just my friend. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for okay. me, dude, it's uh, just like Ken, a very good productive off season, and uh, at least, at least I want 12 15 pounds of real tissue in the right areas and uh, keep that waist tight, man. That's all I got. Keep the waist tight and grow the lats and the arms and shoulders. And uh, we'll see how it goes 2025. Uh, Tons that's of insulin. Goals. Tons <laughs> of insulin. Yeah, we'll start with five I use. I, I, think, I think what everyone's trying to say, that's what we're missing over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess so. My goal. But I got to use, uh, I got to try that 10 IU thing for three years oh, and a half. Ah, uh, yeah. That's, it's it's going to do the I job. Try. <laughs> that's definitely gonna do a change for it sure. Makes you feel better. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, my 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 goal is to well, first off, to add some decent amount decent amount of tissue. Um, I don't know how much tissue I can add by now, but let's say five to ten pounds of tissue, and then uh, hopefully I can get a, a top ten at the USA. <laughs> <laughs> top ten. <laughs> What do you mean, top <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, oh, hopefully, I could uh, first, first, first and foremost bring a bring a pro level physique, which is you know important. And I, I believe if I nail it one hundred percent and bring a pro level physique, I can win win the show. So that's the goal. That's the goal. All right, gentlemen. But uh, we're gonna log off. But I want you guys to stay on for a second uh, after I log on. So we're gonna say peace out to the. To the fans. Oh no, we don't got fans. We just got uh haters. Uh, we don't have any, we don't have any more. We don't do it for the fans, remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. Fuck those kids. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> All right, guys, we gonna sign off.